Hello my bells and bats, my name is Sheena Apparel. I am the author of 13 books and I also design knitting patterns, all of which you will find linked down below. And welcome back to Spooky Stitches, the podcast that is 50% ectoplasm and 50% wool. Um, first, a quick obligatory health update. I am still riding the medication roller coaster, I'm trying to find some kind of treatment for my various ailments that does not debilitate me more than the various ailments. Um, the last round has me coming off of two meds so I can start a new one. And if things are a little bit more sporadic in July, then that would be the reason. If you've been wondering where I have been for the last several weeks, um, I do have a sort of chatty video in one of these corners here where I talk about that, but it's a little bit rambly, so allow me to summarize. Um, I was very out of it in April because of the medication roller coaster. Just as I started feeling better, I got the green light to make a trip that I've been trying to take for the last two years which involved flying cross country and then driving back with my mom to get her out of a dangerous situation. Um, we brought along a friend of mine. And I apologize. This is Senor Gato. Hermes. He was very unhappy. And very awkward. And just interrupting things today. What do you have to say for yourself, sir? You're being most obnoxious. He gives no fucks. He's a tuxedo cat. His hobbies include tax evasion. <sighs> anyway, so drift crop. Uh, flew cross country, drove back with my mom and a friend of mine who was my co-driver. Um, <clears throat> my mom is disabled. She doesn't drive. That was why I had to go out and get her. Um, and then she ended up staying with us for three weeks. My friend, not my mom. My mom has her own apartment in the same complex as us. Stop that. So we had a great time. It was very high stress. There was a lot going on. And I just, I have not had time to sit in front of the computer from mid-May until the end of June. <laughs> no. Hermes! Why are you doing this? This is not your napping spot. But it is now July, so everyone is back where they are supposed to be, except my cat, who is con continuing to cause chaos off screen. And I apologize. Um, but we're all doing well, especially under the circumstances. And none of this would have been possible if I was employed at the moment. Um, but it was quite expensive, so if you can take a moment to check out my books and the links down below, I would really appreciate it. He's currently laying under my camera. <laughs> if I let you stay there, will you behave? Never. I know you're unhappy. You would be less unhappy if you would listen to me. <sighs> He's 16. I have no control over him. He just... He's a menace, but I love him. Anyway, none of this would have been possible if I was employed at the moment. Um, I really needed the time off. Um, I would not have been able to take that time off if I had a job. So, however, it did kind of set us back in a lot of ways, um, but it was very, very necessary. So if you could check out my links down below, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, also, if you would like to receive 
a free re review copy of any of my books, I will provide you with an ebook if you provide me with a review on Amazon or Goodreads. Um, and I also do have links to my mailing list and my ARC mailing list down below so that you can get free advanced reader copies of any of my work. Anyway, that was a lot. Um, so let me see where I left it. Here we go. One of the things I picked up on my travels was this little deck right here. So we can do a card pull today. Uh, this is the Spirit Messages Oracle Cards. I've used these a couple of times and I quite like them, so I thought that we would use them today. Um, and I do apologize in advance just because of the lighting, if there's any noise today. We are in the midst of a heat wave here in Washington. It is supposed to be 95 today and 97 tomorrow. We do not have air conditioning. So right now I have the window closed. I have the, this is a south facing window, so I have the curtain drawn to try and keep out some of the sun and keep the heat outside. But I might have to turn on a fan later because it is already getting quite warm in here. So all the artwork is the same on these cards. And this one says, those difficult times will pass. Nothing bad lasts forever. The sun will shine again. The birds will sing. The clouds will clear and you will be glad you kept moving forward. You will soon be rewarded for your patience. Hold on. You are far stronger than you think. So you can see why I like this deck. Um, one of the things that I do when I'm feeling like worn down or uh, just kind of lost is my tarot decks I find very encouraging and sometimes you just need to like ask the universe a question and get a response and so that's one of the reasons why I collect tarot apart from the pretty pictures. <laughs> um, so apart from that deck I didn't get a ton of acquisitions while I was gone. Um, I did get a few mostly thrift store yarn, which I'm not going to show here because it's mostly just like partial skeins. I don't know what the brands are on any of them. They were just things that I found in the bagged up section of our thrift store. They'll do like plastic bags that have three or four skeins of yarn in them. So I don't know what any of them are. None of them are particularly earth shattering, but I got them to finish a project that I'm working on or to add to a project that I'm working on. Some of them I got for specific purposes, like for um, gifts that I'm working on, which is the main reason why I bought them. But some of them are also just like yarns that I like to have on hand in general. And then some of them, once I've reorganized, I will be donating back to the thrift store because eyelash yarn is not my thing. I am planning another shop update for the end of this month which will have some more summer items in it, some handmade goods for the most part, um, also some de-stash items. Um, I have not figured out yet if I can do discount codes or coupons or sales or anything like that in my coffee shop, so I might just have to adjust the prices, but I will let you know what changes I make in a future episode. And in the meantime, you can just follow my Kofi account. It doesn't cost you anything to just follow and you'll be alerted if I make changes or upload new items or updates or things like that. And all of that information can be found down below. So I haven't had time to make a ton of stuff while I've been gone. Um, start with the oldest thing, which is these socks. I was calling these the scene from space socks. Ash started calling them the Atomic Lemonade Socks. And these are a highly adapted version of my basic sock recipe. So first of all, the yarn is Hearthside Fibers in their Boo Ba base, which is a bamboo wool, and it's in the colorway Groovy. And I used a either two or two and a half size uh, like nine inch circular needle, like the little circular sock needles. 
just because I knew that these were going to end up going on the plane with me and I didn't want to get my needles taken away. Um, so they are a bit looser and baggier than I would normally make. Um, I normally do a 60 stitch foot on a size one needle and I obviously had to use a slightly larger needle for this because I couldn't find those that type of needle in a size one when I was shopping. Um, and then this is a four stitch four row repeat and all it is is every fourth stitch I am I slipped a stitch to the, I slipped a stitch with the yarn held forward which gives this lovely texture and helps the colors to blend a little bit better and I knew that was going to affect how stretchy the leg was so I went ahead and made the leg 70 stitches and then instead of decreasing every other round for the gusset I decreased every round until I got down to 60 again So these are my Atomic Lemonade socks. Um, I have not decided yet if I'm keeping these or if I'm putting them in the shop. Um, if you are a fan of fluorescence and highlighter bright colors, let me know because these match absolutely nothing in my wardrobe, but they were fun to make. <laughs> so when I was done with that, I had some leftovers I wanted to use up. And first I made this bandana, which I am keeping. And this is using leftovers from my Gothic Flamingo sweater that I made a few months ago. So this is the Trey Liz yarn. The base is Seuss and the color is when you play the game of Indie. I really like it. I didn't have a whole lot left, so I just did a little scalloped edging on here. And this was done doing using a uh, 3.75 millimeter hook or an F hook, which that's my favorite size to use with fingering weight. And then once that was done, I used the leftovers from those socks to make another one. And this one is definitely going up in the shop because it does nothing for my complexion. <laughs> I didn't use patterns for those. Those are just, uh, I basically made a granny square except I only used three sides. So granny triangle. Speaking of crocheted granny stitch stuff, um, I showed you a while back some flower motifs that I was making for a gift and I was very secretive about it. I decided I do not like how those flower motifs look. I hate them, in fact. So I went back to my stash. I pulled out all of my fingering weight yarn leftovers as well as some of the thrifted yarns that I just got and I'm making granny squares and these are going to be going together into an afghan. Afghan does have a special little twist on how I'm putting things together that is going to make it, I think, prettier and uh, more to the taste of the recipient. It's nothing earth shattering. I'm not like making something up from scratch or anything like that, but I am going to keep the secret sauce a secret a little bit longer just because this is for a gift. And I currently have including those two, which I just found this morning, um, 33 and a half granny squares for this. Um, and instead of doing the smaller project I was originally intending, I'm just going to do an afghan because why the heck not? Also, my brain has really been into crocheted granny squares lately. It has not been into weaving the ends in, but it's been really enjoying making the granny squares. So the next thing that I finished, um, when I was going to Ohio, I literally just grabbed my current whip and then went to my bin of yarn and was like, oh, I like this color. I'm taking it with me. That's literally all it was. I had no idea what I was making with it. I had a couple of false starts and eventually I ended up with this. So this is basically a triangle shawl recipe. 
but very small. It used about two thirds of a skein of DK weight yarn. And this is, ooh, Dragon Flight Yarns. It's sport weight. The color is called In the Depths and it is a 100% superwash merino. Uh, 328 yards, 100 grams, if that makes a difference to you. And I made this because you might notice that it kind of matches my hair. My hair is bleeding a lot lately because of the dye that I used. So because I usually do not blow dry my hair, I usually let it air dry. I made this to be like a 1940s turban so that way it can absorb some of the excess water before I go to bed at night and um, also you know keep it from bleeding all over the place and it won't even show because this is the same color as my hair so one second okay so here we are with it on if I can stop my tripod from shaking um, this is not meant to be worn like outside of the house or anything like I said this is just for like before bed to keep me from getting dye all over the place it is very comfortable I absolutely love it I love the yarn it's very squishy um, and it's going to be perfect for the purpose I intended to serve so that is this oh I do have one other small finished object And that would be made from the leftovers of this. Um, so recently my cell phone decided that it was going to try face jumping and jumped about two and a half feet out of my purse while I was bending down to get a bag of groceries and just face first on the concrete completely shattered. And considering the situation I'm in, I would have just been like, okay, I, I will put off getting it fixed or something. However, I've been having trouble with this phone basically out of the box. And when I was trying to like test the screen and everything that night, just to make sure everything was still working, I could feel like the raised glass and I was getting like glitter shards on my hand. And I'm like, this isn't safe. I don't want pieces of glass falling out in my purse or anything like that. Um, the irony of the situation is that I usually have a very high quality screen protector on my phone and I usually have a very high quality case on my phone. However, I have a cat who likes to bite things, not that cat back there, Morgan. Um, she likes to bite on things like power cords and phone screens and laptop screens. So she bit my phone and when she did so it created like a bubble underneath where her tooth mark was because le yes, she left a tooth mark on my phone. And that corner would no longer work because the screen protector was no longer touching the screen. So I had to take it off. And then because I was traveling and I was trying to go as lightweight as possible, I got a smaller phone case for my phone. So originally I had this one. I usually get a two layer case that has like some kind of silicone or something inside. And then it has a hard shell on the outside. This one is looking very ragged and worn because it was cheap, like just the paint job is not very high quality, but the phone case itself is very sturdy. And I swapped it out for this one, which has like a silicone exterior. Um, it's a little bit more flexible. It's a lot smaller and thinner. Well, um, yeah, when this landed just like that, the case did not protect my phone because it doesn't have as much going around the edges. Anyway, that's a long way of saying that my phone broke and I'm still waiting on the new case to come in. So I made a little bag for it. This is Fisherman's Rib. So it is extra like squishy and stretchy and cushiony. Um, I also used the same size needle I did for this one, which was a size four. Uh, Ideally, I would have used more like a two or a three for this, maybe. 
However, I was lazy and didn't want to get up to get another needle. And I also knew that I was very short on yarn. I wasn't sure I would have enough for this in this stitch. So it is what it is. And then once my new phone case comes in, I will be using this to store my uh, spare power pack in my purse because I usually carry a spare battery with me, especially when I'm traveling, but um, it's just become kind of a habit. Okay, I'm gonna try and move fast with the rest of this because it is getting quite steamy in here and I'm not sure how much longer I can manage without the fans on. So in my catch up video that I posted about my travels, oh, I was frogging an old sweater and I've already cast on with that yarn. And because I've apparently been in the Bermuda Triangle for the last two months, I'm making a triangle shawl. Well, that's actually upside down. This will be the top of it. So it's coming out a little bit more 19th century than like 15th century, but I like the colors. I like the yarn, but I cannot wear this yarn. It is the glittery yarn right here. It's just too coarse. It's too scratchy. I can't have it against my skin. So what I'm doing is I'm knitting this just for funsies, and then I'm going to be donating it to our SCA group as largesse. And if you're not familiar with that term, basically largesse is what the people in charge of your local group give to other people as like a thank you or a welcome or hey, you've done a great job, something like that. And they're kind of like uh, little door prizes that are given out at the discretion of the people in charge. So I'm getting that for fun and then it will go to a good home once it's done. The only other thing I've been working on is just these little granny squares. These are just two examples. I have a ton more. That doesn't belong there. Um, like I said, that I'm up to like 33 of those right now. I'm estimating I need 100, but I might need as many as 150. I'm not positive yet. So that is the crafting that I have been doing which hasn't been a whole lot, lot. I haven't had a ton of time or brain space, but I'm starting to get like back into my usual routine, my new routine. Um, my mom now lives basically two doors away from us. So I'm kind of like figuring out what the balance is between our space and her space and individual things and things we do together and all of that because like I said she is disabled she does need my help I do take her a lot of places um, we are very close my mom is basically my best friend however we also do need our own space and that has become abundantly clear over the last six weeks because that was a lot of togetherness like a lot it was way more togetherness than I have ever had in my entire life and a lot of me does not want to repeat that experience as fun as it was. <laughs> so I've also been playing uh, Dreamlight Valley on Switch. I'm currently working through the Star Path for Mulan and trying to update all of my friendship ratings because I'm really bad at making friends both in real life and in video games. I am an introvert and I'm autistic. I am not great at talking to people and I forgot that several characters in that game exist. So like Eve had a friendship rating of like five and she's been in the game for months. <laughs> so I'm working on getting caught up on that. Um, I was really happy with what they did for 626 day and as soon as I get some moonstones I'm going to be getting that set. However, um, I am not paying money for moonstones right now because I have a policy of not paying for pixels. Um, sometimes I can't resist but right now I really need to resist. 
Um, and if you're not familiar, 626 day is Stitch Day. He's Experiment 626, which also happens to fall right around my birthday, which is the 24th. So while my friend was here, we were showing her around everywhere. I took her to our local mall, which has several import stores in it from Japan. She absolutely loves Asian culture. And we were standing in line at, I think it was Hot Topic. And if you're not aware, I am kind of obsessed with Stitch. I have a collection of Stitch plushes on my bed. I have a piece of Stitch artwork that usually hangs above my desk. Um, I collect figurines. I love Stitch. And so I had checked out, bought something completely unrelated. And as soon as he finished checking me out, the cashier turns to his coworker and he's like, I need you to get me a selection of Stitch merchandise. And I'm just like, um, is, is it because I'm standing here? Like, am I just giving off the Stitch vibes? <laughs> I don't know. Is it the blue hair? Did the blue hair give me away? I'm not sure. <laughs> So we were just seeing like all these displays and stuff of Stitch. I, I reined myself in because paying rent is important. Um, but I did think that it was a lot of fun. And I'm just really loving how so far this summer everything has been Stitch. <laughs> I find that very joyous. It brings me joy. <laughs> so I'm just kind of rolling with it and enjoying it. Um, so since we have had to cut our expenses, I have been watching a lot of free streaming services, um, especially Tubi and Freebie. Um, I stumbled on Tubi's paranormal section last week, and I've just been mainlining every historical paranormal series that they have. Um, I've been watching a lot of Psychic Detectives, which is from the early-ish 2000s and basically documents a bunch of missing persons and murder cases and they take what the psychic says and compare it to the scientific evidence and see how the two line up with each other. Um, I find it fascinating. It's a lot of fun. However, I hate the narrator. I hate her. I know she's a real person, but she sounds like the early AI bot on Kindles for text-to-speech. So just like that very like monotone, something slightly off in her cadence type of voice. I hate it, but I like the show, so I keep watching. Um, a lot of stuff on like historic haunted castles, ghost stories. Um, most of these are from like 2000 to 2010, so they are older, they are dated, they're still fun to watch. I love them. Um, I also watched... The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, um, Season 3 of The Witcher, and Lydia Poet, all of which are on Netflix, um, and all of which were at least four stars for me. I loved them. I wasn't as keen on this installment of The Conjuring series as I was the previous two, and a big part of that was just the way that they styled Vera Farmingia. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. I'm not sure. Uh, and that's partially because the series has moved into the 1980s, and I don't like 80s fashion very much, but also because they based her style a lot more closely to what the real Lorraine Warren was wearing in the 80s and 90s. And I just wanted to take every single pussycat bow and tear it off of her. <laughs> I hate them. Um, I loved her costumes in the first two movies, and especially the second one. But the pussy capos, they're killing me. Um, I really don't like Ed and Lorraine Warren as people. I think they were awful human beings, but I really like the way that they're depicted in this series. They make great characters. Anyway, that little side quest aside, um, I also really loved The Witcher and Lydia Poet. My only complaint about The Witcher, and this was also my complaint with season one, is the back and forth on the timelines. It makes it hard to follow. And we saw a lot of events from three different perspectives successively, which could get redundant, but also get confusing. Um, I don't like the way that the timelines are handled in the show, but I love the story, so I keep watching. And um, I, I also love the cast. And shame on you, Netflix, for replacing Henry Cavill. 
you should have made him a producer instead. As for Lydia Poet, no notes. <laughs> Absolutely five stars. Cannot wait for season two. This is an Italian series set around 1900 or a little bit before. And in it, Lydia, who was a real person, she was the first female lawyer in Italy. She graduates from law school, passes the bar, takes on her first clients, and then is told that it's inappropriate for women to be lawyers and her license is revoked. So she basically becomes a PI with the help of her journalist brother-in-law and starts feeding information to her older brother, who is also a lawyer, and helping him with his cases and kind of like tricking slash bullying him into taking a whole lot of like pro bono cases and cases where just a very egregious injustice has been done because she has way more morals <laughs> than her older brother in a lot of ways. Um, it has excellent fashion, excellent storyline. Um, she causes the most trouble in the best way possible and I love it. So if you have not watched Lydia Poet, it is only six episodes. It's on Netflix right now. And I have heard that there is going to be a season two, but I don't know when it's coming out. I have also been watching a lot of Scooby-Doo lately, <laughs> starting with the 1970s cartoon, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Because I loved the movies as a kid. I didn't get to see the cartoon series very much. I've never seen the series in order. And it's just great background noise, especially when you're working on a cozy mystery. <laughs> which is what I have been writing lately and editing and my next video will be all about the cozy mysteries and what I'm doing for Camp NaNoWriMo which is the month of July. Um, I've also been trying to read. One of the things that we did during our huge vacation road trip um, hosting a friend thing was we drove down to Portland and visited Powell's which is a massive bookstore. And I got three used books. I read one of them right away, which was The Librarian of Burned Books. And I absolutely loved it. Four stars. I'm not sure I would read it again, which for me is how I delineate between a four star read and a five star read. If it's something that I think I can read over and over again, then it's five stars. If it's something where it was really incredible, but I'm not sure that I will keep revisiting it over and over again, it's not something that's going to live rent free in my head, then it's a four star read. Um, but it was really, really good. Um, I found it really, I found it inspirational from a storytelling perspective, not in like a, uh, like an inspiration porn type of way. Like, oh, these people went through all these horrible things and they came out the better for it. Not in that kind of way. I'm talking like, I liked the story structure and from a creative perspective, I found it inspiring, but it was a very good book. I really enjoyed it. I loved the characters. And it was one of those books where even though some of the main characters had very deep flaws in them, they were still very relatable and likable. And a lot of times when you read a book where you have a deeply flawed main character, I find them to just be incredibly off-putting because at their core they end up being horrible people. And these are good people who have maybe made mistakes in some way, and then they're learning from them over the course of the book. <sighs> anyway, that has been a lot. That seems to be my catchphrase lately. It's just everything has been a lot. I don't have a spooky story for you this week because I have already been rambling for about 40 minutes, and I'm going to have to cut some of this down a little bit. Um, and also because I'm just trying to get more videos out to make up for the time that I was gone. So I might do a reading coming up. Um, I was thinking about doing a reading of one of my books that I'm promoting in June and July and into August, which is, um, By the Grace, which is a ghost story set in a boarding school in Ohio during the Spanish flu epidemic. And 
So if you would like to have a longer reading of By the Grace, like maybe two or three chapters, leave me a comment down below. Um, it would also be a major help if you could like, subscribe, share, interact with this video in some way because this menace is so expensive. On top of the stuff he keeps breaking, he also has arthritis and chronic kidney disease now. So like I said, he's 16. I can't control him. He, he's a disaster. Do you want the window open? Do you know what this is? <sighs> yeah, the cat is hot too. Anyway, I am going to go sign off now and turn the fans back on and hopefully get this video edited before I need to leave for the day because we have somewhere we have to be this afternoon. And I will see you guys next week. Ciao.